I want to share with you a lesson that I've learned from doing over 100 launches in the past 15 years. I have launched dozens of online courses, uh, over a dozen group programs, membership programs. Um, of course, one-on-one -on -one coaching, coaching packages, um, webinars, retreats, uh, all kinds of things that I think a lot of you are also um, selling in some way. Uh, if you are somebody who uh, wants to create a livelihood, an authentic business based on your knowledge, your presence, your ability and interest in providing facilitation for others' transformation, then I think this video will be quite relevant for you. So given all of these uh, launches, I've learned a counterintuitive truth, which is that timing doesn't really matter. Now, like I said, it's counterintuitive because typically uh, if you ask, you know, it seems like the idea of timing, oh, it was a bad timing, good timing seems so important, doesn't it? And therefore we are always trying to find what is the best timing? I mean, people, you know, try to do research on what's the best time of the year to launch something or the best time of the month or the best time of the week or even the time of the day to post, you know, email your list or something like that. Some people, you know, go as far as using astrology to say, well, this is not a good time to launch your product because of the, the you know, these reasons, um, spiritual reasons or mystical reasons, et cetera. And you know what? I am sure that timing has obviously some influence, um, but I have learned, like I said, over a hundred launches has taught me that there's something that matters far more than timing, which is the topic of your launch. In other words, the product market fit, the thing you want to sell, how aligned is it with your audience? Because if it's aligned with them, you could launch it at the worst possible, supposedly worst possible time of the year, astrologically as well, uh, could be you know like 3 a.m. in the morning, you, you, you post something. And if it's the right fit with the audience, it still will sell way better than a product a launch, a, a um, coaching program, membership course that isn't what the audience wants. And yet you launch it at the perfect time of year, perfect astrological alignments, perfect time of week, day, month, whatever. It is so interesting. And I know it's hard to believe because have you ever launched something and then people have commented or wrote to you to say, you know, that looks great, but it's just not the right timing for me. Have you ever had that experience? Well, of course, given that I've had over a hundred launches, <laughs> every single, no, this is, this might be surprising to you. Every single launch, I get comments or emails saying it looks great, but the timing is not right. Every single one. So you could say, well, yeah, it, it's, it's always a bad timing for somebody in your audience. It's true. I mean, how could it be perfect time for everybody? It's not. I mean, no, no matter how much you look at astrology or whatever, maybe it's not perfect timing for everyone. And even let's say you launch uh, on Christmas Day at 3 a.m. I mean, pick a, pick a random supposedly best, worst time of the year, right? Let's say you launch it on, I don't know, pick a, pick a holiday at like 2, 3, 4 a.m., you know, on, on a holiday. It's supposed to be worst timing. There are always going to be also people who are checking their email, who are on social media. In fact, some people are more available on social media during holidays because during the rest of the time, they're working and they're busy, distracted by other things. And during holidays, maybe they're more relaxed and they're able to catch up on their email and their social media. Do you see what I mean? Like every single launch, there will be people who tell you good timing, bad timing. By the way, this is also true for content. I'm not talking just about offers. This is true for content as well. Have you noticed 
that sometimes when you post something and it really fits your audience, people will say, perfect timing. I needed that today. Now, were you literally thinking, gosh, this is going to be the perfect timing for so-and-so, so and Of course not. Of course not. You just posted something. Maybe it, maybe it was something that was resonating with you. Maybe it's something that you planned to post a month ago. This is true. This is true all the time for me. Uh, most of my content that you see out there, I have been planning to post it for weeks or months. And then I post it and you say, oh, it was a perfect time for me. I'm like, I didn't, I wasn't planning on a particular time of the month or year to post this. It just was in my calendar. It was just in my rhythm. I, and you happen to, to, it just happened to fit you. And same thing, it was not the perfect timing for lots of other people. So it's always funny to me when someone says perfect timing, George, I'm like, sorry, I didn't <laughs> plan it with you in mind. I wasn't trying to do the timing thing. I was just posting because on my calendar, it says to post on Friday, for example, or Tuesday or whatever. And it, it was a topic that was just in my list and it was coming up on my list and it was, it wasn't made for you i mean sorry it was made for you i always think about my audience but it wasn't made for that particular person and it's like oh perfect timing no, like, so back to selling effectively okay and making sure that your launches are successful please 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 let go of this illusion that there is a perfect time of year to launch something or perfect time of the month perfect day of the week perfect time of the day to send your email, a hundred launches have shown me. And by the way, please do track your launches and you can tell me after 30 launches, tell me if I'm right or wrong on this, okay? The topic, which is the product market fit, the, the how, how well aligned is the thing you're offering with what your audience is wanting. If it's really aligned, if, if you offer something like, oh my gosh, I've been thinking about that, I want that, it doesn't matter when you launch it. I mean, sorry, obviously, in the general timing of the culture, it matters, right? Like this thing is hot right now in the culture and you launch something related to that hot thing, it's going to do much better than you launch something that was hot 20 years ago, obviously. So in that sense, in the larger scheme of things, timing obviously matters hugely but more in terms of cultural trends, not in terms of astrological things. You should be launching it on this astrological you know, tr uh, transition. I don't know astrology, sorry, or this particular time of the year because that's when people are coming back to school or, or whatever. Really, I have noticed this again and again. So, so what that means, what this means is, I'm sorry, but you have no more excuses for saying, well, I'm going to launch it this, this, and I was going to launch it, you know, uh, two weeks from now, but I think I'll launch it two months from now because of some astrological timing or, or some other time of the year is supposed to be better. You're making an excuse based on, well, I don't know, based on many things. It could be based on fear, anxiety about whether people will want to buy it, you know, which is legitimate, right? It could be about, oh, you know, you have family visiting and so therefore you have less time, whatever. But it's not timing in terms of the market. It's your timing. I mean, of course, it's what, when can you launch it is what I care about the most. And so, and so one, one more thing I'll, I'll say that's I've learned over 100 launches is this. The more often I launch things, the more I learn about my, what my market wants. The ultimate market research, the ultimate understanding of what's going to sell is when you actually sell it, when you actually present humbly, hopefully, without too much pushing, you present this product to your audience and see if they're taking you up on it. And if they aren't, then timing didn't matter at all. It was the product market fit wasn't right. Or you could be launching, yeah, no, this might be a bad time, but George says launch more frequently. So I'm going to launch this other thing. Oh my gosh, people take you up on it. People are excited by it. People spread the word about it because it was aligned with their wants. And so what's much more important than trying to figure out the right time? Oh, and oh, I have to say one more, one more piece of evidence for you. I recently 
I this I'm recording this uh, in in April uh, of, of 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 the year, and I've already launched uh, what is it five no six things this year. <laughs> I've launched six things. And it's only the beginning, middle of April right now. I've already launched six things this year. And every launch that I do, I give the same effort. I mean, because I have a launch plan and I just follow my plan every time. And it's always gentle. It's gentle on my system. It's gentle on my audience. And so same effort, right? It's very interesting to me that out of my six launches, same effort, I didn't care about timing. Two of those did super well. Okay. Another two of them did okay, decent, not too bad, acceptable, you know, and then two of them flopped. And what's interesting here is this, the one of them that flopped, okay, again, same effort as the ones that did really well. One of them flopped. And then I've got more messages during that flop saying, oh, it looks good, but bad timing for me. So this is interesting. Again, I, I've said earlier, you will always get somebody or multiple people saying, hey, good, looks good, but bad timing for me. But if it's not a good fit, the thing you're presenting is bad fit for your audience, you're going to get more of those messages. You're going to have more people saying, oh, yeah, bad timing for me. You know, here's, here's what's funny. Okay. Right after the thing that flopped, I pivoted. I, I, was, I was fast. I was like, okay, great. So two weeks later, I launched something totally different. And it was still the same time of year, still a very busy time of year during March, you know, people are uh, maybe preparing for their taxes or, you know, spring cleaning or whatever. People are busy all the time. But it was just two weeks after my flop. And this other thing went bonkers. It did so well. And some of those same people said, Oh, George, I'm, I'm exhausted right now, I probably can't sign up for anything for a few months, bad time, they signed up right away within two weeks. It's again, it's not timing. It's the fit. And, and also, even if some people literally had bad timing, and they were not ready to sign up for six months or whatever, it doesn't matter because enough other people signed up who for whom timing was good or bad doesn't matter, but the topic was right. And they signed up. It's not about timing people. It's about the topic. It's about what you chose to frame. You, you, have, you have certain skills. You have many skills. And all of your skills can not, okay, actually, I'm, I'll say this. Probably all, most of your skills can make lots of money. The problem is you need to frame your skills in a way that the audience wants. You don't have to change skills. You don't have to learn a totally different skill to, to make money. You could take the same skills, but the way you frame it, the issues that you highlight that this, that that particular skill can solve, for example, the problems that this this skill that you have, let's just pick one of your skills. One, that one skill can solve 12 different problems or can solve three problems for five different types of people, okay? Or can solve one problem, but for like 10 different contexts, okay? That one skill may flop in terms of money-making ability if you launch four different things because you didn't frame it right to what the audience is really wanting to pay for. And yet you have two other framings of that same skill that just goes wild. People just, oh my gosh, thank you so much for offering this thing. So it's back to the core skill that I keep practicing over and over again and I hope you will keep practicing over and over again, which is market research. Now, I funny thing is when I've done market research on the term market research, most of you don't like it. Most of you don't want to buy a course on market research. Um, you know, it's so, so funny. I, I, I told you I've launched six things this year. Two of them went really done really well. Two of them did okay. And two of them flopped. Well, one of the ones that flopped <laughs> Right now, as of this recording, I am actually launching my market research course. And that's one of the ones that's flopping. <laughs> it's funny enough, right? This is funny because market research is literally the skill that's supposed to make something not flop. But I'll, I'll tell you why this one's flopping. Because I got lazy and I did not 
I, I knew that I, I, in my early market research, I knew people didn't like the term market research. They just didn't like it. All of you, please agree with me or not below. Like you don't, you don't understand what it means. You think it's dry. You think it's boring. You don't think, you don't see why it matters to you. Why? It's like, oh, George, I just, know, I just need to learn social media. Then people will hire me. People will buy my stuff. No, you need to learn market research. Because no matter, like I said, even with social media posts or, or offers, if what you're offering has right product market fit, it will go viral even if you have no audience. That's the weirdest thing about, about product market fit. Yes, a bigger audience helps speed things up for sure. It helps things go viral faster. It helps, um, you know, something was bought by 10 people and a bigger audience helps it, buy, helps it be purchased by 20 people. But if your thing is not the right fit for your, the, the audience or the world, if you have zero audience, but you have some friends, right? If the thing isn't something your friends are passionate to talk about, you'll sell zero. And if you have an audience of 10,000 people, I have an audience of 10,000 people, and if the thing isn't the right fit, it'll still sell zero, right? Because a, a bigger audience is an amplifier. It's not a savior. You, 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 you can't save your business with a bigger audience. Not really. It's an amplifier of if this thing sold 10, with a bigger audience, it'll sell 15 or 20. If this thing sold 100, with a bigger audience, it'll sell 150 or 200. Not this thing sold zero because I have no audience. And then now I have a big audience. It sold 1,000. It's not going to work like that. It's an amplifier. What's 1,000 times zero? If it's a zero product market fit, a thousand time, a thousand size audience or ten thousand size audience times zero is still zero. But if the product market fit is at a level of ten, let's say, and you multiply that, well, if you have a thousand person audience, it's not going to multiply that by a thousand, but it's going to multiply that by by fifty um, percent. It'll still sell fifteen or sell twenty now instead of ten. If these things sell ten, a hundred, it'll sell, like I said, one hundred fifty or two hundred or three hundred with a bigger audience. So product market fit is determined by market research. And that's what, honestly, most solopreneurs are lacking, don't have the skill. And that's why I, I, I'm, right now I've already started launching the thing, so I'm gonna keep going even with a bad name. But um, I, I know by now, this is launch, over 100 launches now. I'm like, okay, yeah, this is a bad name, but I don't have time right now to change the name and do more market research for the name. I already got some sales and it's probably more than most of you would, well, most of you are probably happy by that, but by my standard, it's very, very low compared to my other launches. But still, I know people need it. I don't have time right now to figure out a better name than market research. So I'm just going to keep going and it's going to be a small class. But uh, but uh, afterwards, I'll probably relaunch it with a different name after doing some more market research. But I know just from my, my, my experiences doing market research, if I do market research well, uh, if I'm patient enough to do it well, just take a you know, take a few more weeks. Um, I, I made the mistake this time of, of starting the launch before I did finish my market research, whatever. Um, but when I have done my market research, it's always gone well. It's always done done well afterwards. Almost always. Now there's always, I'm not, no, there's no guarantee, but it's usually done well to, because of market research and something I did in market research, I launch it. It usually doesn't do well. That's the thing. Our intuition we want to believe that somehow, you know, God is going to speak through my intuition and tell me to launch this thing. If I just sit in meditation long enough and just silent and quiet long enough, that still small voice of higher consciousness within will tell me which product to launch, which service to launch. And my gosh, I launched it and indeed people bought it. Yeah. How's it going? <laughs> Most of my clients are very intuitive. Most of my students are more intuitive than me. And yet, most of them have the experience commonly. Intuition doesn't work when it comes to product market fit. It doesn't. Market research, validating through external feedback is essential. Yeah, paired with your intuition, obviously. But validation through market research is essential. So I hope this makes sense to you. I hope this has shifted your thinking about how you can succeed in your business um, and get plenty of clients, get plenty of sales. It's topic, it's the format and topic format. I talk about this some other time, but 
you know, whether you deliver it as one-to-one or a group program or a course or a long course, short course, large, small group program, one-to-one package, but that matters too. And that's part of market research as well. But, but I wanted to focus on topic because some of you are really wedded to a particular form. Oh, I want to do one-on-one coaching. Oh, I want to do courses, whatever you want to do. The topic matters hugely. So I hope this changes your mind and helps you realize, okay, you got to do more research, market research with regards to the topic. Like I said, I happen to be launching a course right now in market research, whether you learn it from me or from other people or research it yourself, it's essential. It's essential. That's what I've learned. So I hope this is helpful. This, If I heard this video or saw this video when I first began in my business or even partway through, this would have saved me so much heartache. Would have saved me so much time as well. And built my business much sooner than, than, than it did. So I hope that this will also save you time, make you more money, uh, give you more fulfillment, honestly. Because authentic market research, the way I do it, is much more fulfilling than looking at charts and data. And, and that's not, I mean, that's not relevant for a lot of solopreneurs. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. And thank you so much for watching.